It's been 22 years since the last civilian that we know of took a trip in a supersonic airliner. Back in 2003, the mighty Concorde, plagued by a number of financial troubles, had its final flight, and with it humanity's hopes of civilians constantly flying from point A to point B faster than the speed of sound vanished. But now, two decades later, there is reason to hope again, as several private companies, but also NASA itself, are working hard at bringing supersonic air travel back. Of this happy bunch, just one can now brag about actually going over Mach 1 in the aircraft it's designing, Boom Supersonic. The company, founded just 10 years ago, has made it its mission to bring the benefits of supersonic flight to everyone. That's not something we haven't heard from others already, but these guys seem to put their money where their mouth is, and just announced they have gone supersonic in the first civil supersonic jet made in America. That would be a contraption called XB-1, a demonstrator that will form the basis of the company's supersonic airliner, the Overture. Powered by a trio of General Electric turbofan engines capable of developing 4,300 pounds of thrust each, it took off this week from the Mojave Air and Spaceport in California, with test pilot Tristan Brandenburg at the controls. The plane took off from the runway and headed up to the supersonic corridor located in the same area where Chuck Yeager broke for the first time through the sound barrier back in 1947. When it reached an altitude of 35,290 feet, the pilot floored it, taking the XB-1 to a top speed of Mach 1.122. This was, by all accounts, the first time a jet aircraft built in the US by a civilian company, with no help from the government broke through the sound barrier, marking not only a huge milestone in aviation, but also proving to anyone that faster-than-sound passenger travel is coming back. The flight was the first in a series of others that will follow in the near future as Boom Supersonic is moving toward the development of the Overture, a plane described as the world's fastest airliner. Although the two aircraft are quite different, they do share a lot of the technologies currently being tested. When fully operational, it's unclear at this point when that will be, but hopes our overture will be ready by the end of the decade, the plane will be capable of flying to speeds of up to Mach 1.7, twice the speed of the fastest airliner available today, thanks to an in-house developed engine called Symphony. A twin-spool, medium-bypass turbofan unit with no afterburner by design, the power plant will be capable of generating 35,000 pounds of thrust at takeoff, and it will also be quiet enough not to disturb the people below. That's in part thanks to the fact that the unit, which will be capable of operating exclusively on sustainable aviation fuel, uses a single-stage fan and a passively cooled high-pressure turbine. The design of the Overture makes it something of a sight in the world of aviation. Because it needs a high angle of attack for takeoff and landing, it features a long nose, not unlike that of the Concorde, minus the weight and the complexities of being able to move. To allow pilots to see outside, an augmented reality vision system will be used to back the usual windows. The plane will run the Honeywell Anthem avionics suite that was introduced back in 2021, a head-worn vision system developed by Universal Avionics, and active control side sticks developed by BAE Systems, the first time a commercial airliner uses these force feedback parts. Just like the demonstrator that broke through the sound barrier this week, the plane will be made entirely from carbon fiber composite materials. The interior space will be large enough to accommodate between 64 and 80 passengers. The Overture is intended to take on transport duties on over 600 global routes, and the aviation industry doesn't seem to mind. Already carriers the likes of American Airlines, United Airlines, and Japan Airlines have placed 130 combined orders for the aircraft. As yet another proof that Boom is serious about this, the company completed work last year on an assembly facility for the Overture. Located in Greensboro, North Carolina, the Super Factory will eventually be capable of rolling out no less than 66 supersonic aircraft per year. We'll keep an eye on the plane's precursor, the XB-1, as it continues to move through the testing procedures. If all goes well, we should have the Federal Aviation Administration and the European Union Aviation Safety Agency giving the technology born from it the thumbs up by the time 2030 reaches us.